Seven. 2,000 home-built rockets. Six. Five. 300 inventive rocketeers. Four. Three. A couple of tons of rocket fuel. Two. One. It's the fastest, highest flying hobby ever to scorch the earth and part the clouds. Oh, that worked. I can't believe it. Amateur rocketry. Oh, my God. A holy man aims a bowling ball for the heaven. Oh, Three, two, one. Let's build rockets. Eight teams compete against the clock and each other in a race to build a rocket from the ground up. This was as much oh. fun as I have ever had doing rocketry. Tempers run as hot as the noonday sun. You lied to me, sir. You were taking our equipment and you knew it. And can cows really fly? What could go wrong? It's a rocket. Three, two, one. Time to light this candle. Rocket Challenge starts now. Argonia, Kansas, America's heartland, home of open fields, the local swimming hole, and rockets. Three, two, one. Welcome to a world where hobbyists can hit Mach 2 at 20,000 feet. A world where shredding is bad and a land shark is much worse, and the difference between success and catastrophe can be determined in a heart-pounding few seconds. This is Rocket Challenge. Get ready to meet a unique collection of men and women drawn together by their love of high tech and high adrenaline. Now, what good would a hobby like amateur rocketry be if it didn't have its own language? I thought we were going to see some sort of ballistic something that are going up on the launch. Out on the launch range, basic conversation includes terms like land sharks, shreds, and core samples, which in plain English means rockets going sideways at ground level, rockets coming apart in the air, and rockets that plunge into the earth so hard you got to dig them out. There's one piece of jargon that makes rocket builders blood run cold and spectators just plain run. Kato. Kato. Kato is bad. What's a Kato? Catastrophic failure. Oh, this rocket won't Kato. Catastrophic failure. Kato is a hip rocket lingo out at our site. I personally never had one. Uh... In rocketry, you never ever explode, disintegrate, or blow up. You Kato. And as spectacular as it is to see a picture-perfect launch, we have to admit, it gets your adrenaline pumping to see a Kato. No gathering of Rocketeers is complete with that one. Oh, oh. Some take place in midair. Some never make it that far. Three, two, one, ignition. There we go. So when you see a Rocketeer win as they hit the launch button, oh. you know what they're fearing. The dreaded Kato. Oh. Oh. Me. Rocket science is essentially about weight versus thrust. So we thought it would be interesting to see who could get a 16 pound bowling ball in the air and how high. For Team Loch Ness, preparations for the ballistic bowling ball competition started three months ago in their home territory of Edinburgh, Texas. Try to make it as aerodynamic as possible. Obviously, we have a big surface outside of the rocket. So we're going to use a bigger tube with a bigger nose cone, break the air over the bowling ball. We're going to taper it down to as narrow as we can get it. That will be the basic shape of this particular rocket. I'm a winner. I don't like to lose. I just don't. <laughs> Team Loch Ness blow into Kansas with a little bad weather of their own. 
This is the storm. But they find that even the best rocket is worthless without a place to launch it. Um, I'm not sure which one of these. I mean, we don't have any rods out here at all. Well, they have the rod. Is there one that it can go I into? I just need a pad. Oh. You need a pad. We can stick it in. While Loch Ness continues their search, things are running a little more smoothly across the field, perhaps due in part to some divine inspiration. My name's Brad Wilson. They call me the Rocket Rev because I happen to be a United Methodist pastor. I'm currently in my fourth church in a gorgeous little town, Fenton, Illinois. With 21 years as an ordained pastor and 38 years in rocketry, Brad has been eyeing the heavens for as long as he can remember. I, I am a man of faith, but I definitely am a man of science. I'm the president of Triple Quad Cities, and uh, we just we just want to make it available for everybody to come and fly. We're flying it on a C65, out on low power pad number six. That's a great flight job. Well done. Oh, cool. That's one of the great things about this hobby is that it can definitely be a hobby that leads children into the technology fields. You talk to almost any of the astronauts that work for NASA these days, and most of them will tell you that as children, they started out flying model rockets. Mine's a mad cow in the middle. Brooksy, Brooksy here is um, Tidal Wave, which is on the right, and it's blue. And then Michael. I'm that ionizer. Ionizer. He is on the left. And three, two, one, launch. There's just nothing in the world like seeing the lights going on into a child's mind when they begin to understand the concepts of science that you can teach through rocketry. It's been broke off, it looks like. My parachute melted. Yeah. Sacrifices. It will be back. And it's a constant challenge just simply because there are so many different aspects of the hobby that people can work on. It can be very complicated. The Reverend's rocket is ready and loaded for launch, and he's looking for a bowling ball boost of biblical proportions. The name of my rocket is Trublion, which is a Greek word for bowl. Uh, being a pastor, I thought, well, why not come up with the name uh, out of the New Testament. It is now in the hand of God. The first rockets are ready to fly. Three, two, one. It's just not getting the altitude I was expecting. Oh, it was fighting yeah. itself. Last year, they did give me an award for being the safe bowler because I had managed to fly my bowling ball, I think about six flights, and recovered it perfectly every single time. It's a safety record that soon could be on the line. Oh Lord, please don't land on the wires. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it missed the power line or telephone line, whatever that is. It was a good safe flight, but I didn't get anywhere near the altitude I was looking for. Getting rockets off the ground is the first step. Determining how high they fly is up to telemetry judge Joe Mullen as he listens to the beeps from the altimeter. Five. Seven. Seven. Congratulations. Thank you. Great flight. Thank you. We're the Minnesota You Betchas. It's actually the very first time I've ever done this. I, I'll be honest, I was one of the people that have been close to a bowling ball falling out of the sky, and I always thought it was kind of a dangerous <laughs> pastime. about down. All right, I'm at my first goal. Don't kill anyone. <laughs> oh, lay it down. Give it the official count. 
3604? Yep, I agree. Congratulations, Richard. Thanks. You're the leader. <laughs> Yeah, after two. <laughs> after two, you're the head guy. Well, it didn't go quite Two down, time. four to go. One going. Walking it up. Almost there. Okay. There's a big tent, and we had two to silent. change. 